Thank you for tuning in to the Black Money Tree Podcast, hosted by entrepreneur, investor, and philanthropist, Jerome D. Love. We are committed to teaching you how to build wealth so that you can build your community. At the Black Money Tree, our goal is to empower wealth creation and create economic self-sufficiency in order to empower generations to come. Society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never enjoy. Season one is powered by Wells Fargo Bank. Welcome to the Black Money Tree Podcast. Society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they shall never enjoy. That's an old Greek proverb. And it's with this Greek proverb that the Black Money Tree Wealth Development Strategy was founded. This proverb speaks to two of the key core values of the Black Money Tree. One of those key components is generational wealth. The second one is directed efforts. If the black community is going to grow and build sustainable wealth and to make it a more sustainable community, there have to be systematic targeted efforts that's designed to help individuals in the future. Today, in order to talk about generational wealth and targeted efforts, I'm really excited. We have today with us the new owners of Jet and Ebony Magazine. So I'm excited to welcome Miss Eden Bridgman Skellner, chairwoman of Ebony Jet Magazine. Welcome to the Black Money Tree, Eden. Hi, thank you for having me. Honored to speak with you today. Now, 75 years Ebony has been in existence. John Johnson founded the company in 1945. To me, that's the epitome of generational wealth. He had a vision in 1945, and 75 years later, that mission, that vision is still coming to pass. How does it make you feel to step into such a rich legacy? Honestly, I don't think it's set in um, at all, to be perfectly honest. And we're about, we took over in January of this year. Um, So just not even a full year as new owners. And you know, it's one of those that you feel humbled by the opportunity. Um, I don't think there's an individual um, walking around that doesn't know the name Ebony, doesn't know the name Jet, and have an amazing story to tell on how those publications transformed their life or was instrumental in, in something for their family. So for my family to now be the owners, um, it truly is a humbling experience. Now, you, you talked a little bit about your family and, and, and the talk, the, the, what we're going to really focus on on this episode is really more about generational wealth. Your dad was hugely successful. Now, he's not a household name, but if you Google him, Junior Bridgman is up there with Magic and Jordan and LeBron in terms of the top wealthiest NBA players of all time. So there have to be some jewels, some nuggets that he provided growing up. Tell us some of the things that you observed in terms of growing up, watching his him build his empire, and some of the things that he's taught you. Well, I can say that um, he didn't build his empire alone. First, it took my parents as a joint unit. Each had to understand their perspective role within creating generational um, wealth for their family. So as my father, yes, may be the one um, that most people wanna recognize, I always like to make sure that my mom gets equal recognition. There had to be someone else at home holding things down and she's the CEO of the Bridgman team. He may be the founder and, and owner and, and runs the outward business, but she took care of, of everything possible in order to allow my father to go off and do what he needed to do from a business standpoint. So first for them, it was seeing that unit, seeing two individuals working together collectively. That's what my husband and I have shared as we um, entered into our union. My parents are about people. They're about serving and servant leadership was probably one of the core things that that they have stood for continually. No matter what they, uh, whatever they do, they make sure it's about others and serving serving the community. And really, we're a faith based uh, company. Before owning Ebony and Jet, the parent company over our restaurant um, portfolio is Mana Incorporated, obviously Mana from heaven. Um, When you take your cues, obviously from the biblical story 
in the idea that every day God would bless us and give us just what we needed. And so we applied those same principles to our business efforts. So, you know, I could probably go on for hours and hours talking about the things I observed from both of them. But also I would mention my father, you know, most of the time when people reach a certain level of success and he was quite successful during his time as an NBA player, not obviously making the money that LeBron and even Magic and all of them made, he he, he came for them and paid the way so that I'm in uh receive the the level of wealth off of playing basketball but one of the things and one of my fun stories about him is that after he was playing and we were owning restaurants um wendy's in particular somebody saw him working um in the restaurant and they said oh how sad for junior bridgman you know former nba player and now (laughs) someone who was working you know in the restaurant little did they know that he was working it because it was his business and he had to make sure that he locked arms with every individual and he knew that business inside and out and that he was never above, you know, any position because he knew it would take the person that came in and cleaned the restaurant to the person dropping fries to flipping burgers and, and, and things in order to make his business successful so he couldn't be above anyone. So that level of humility is something that I learned from a very uh, young age and have tried to apply it, um, uh, you know, in my career as well. You know, I, I love that response. It, it, it brings forth two questions for me. And the first one I'll, I'll, I'll prefix with a comment. So the black money tree, uh, the reason we chose the tree to symbolize this movement is because a tree is stable. It's, it's, it's something that's solid. And one of the key parts of the tree is the bark. The bark is what provides the protection from the outside elements, much like the manna represented for the children of Israel. It was God's protection for them. And it's our belief that in order for us to be able to build a strong, black community that's self-sustaining that's not sitting back and waiting for someone else to come rescue it we have to be able to create wealth we have to have the resources to um um you know fund our own um elected officials that get in office that advocate for our needs we have to fund our own nonprofit entities and organizations that will advocate for our community so talk a little bit about the need for building wealth in order to build a sustainable black community well obviously if you you know want any level of power you have to be in the driving seat in order to do that in in our society that usually means the people that control the uh, monetary resources in order for you to build you know whatever your dream might be so without wealth within our community we cease to be able to move forward and we are the innovators we are the trendsetters we are everything that the world has been able to profit off of we internally as a community have to be able to take back our intellectual property what makes us amazing you know as african americans and be able to learn how do we monetize it how do we be the ones that are in the control seats so yes without understanding how to build wealth and also how to transition that wealth from generation to generation because we have plenty of stories are in the pages of ebony and jet of people that have made a ton of money in their career. What we have missed out on, and I love the idea of what you guys are doing, is the idea of how do you not only build it, but how does the next generation ready themselves in order to receive it, to stand in those shoes of greatness that came before them and be able to live out their purpose and, and what they need to do to transition it to generation to generation to generation. So without a fundamental understanding of what that means, our community will forever not be able to achieve its greatness when it comes to a monetary um, and financial standpoint. So now you told the story about your dad working at the Wendy's. I got a story for you. So I run the Texas Black Expo. 
we in our 15 year celebration, we had this amazing event. We, we're at the Hilton and all of these dignitaries there. Uh, we actually had the U U.S. Hood Secretary Julian Castro there, Kirby John Caldwell, who was on the cover of uh, Black Enterprise with Eddie Long and T.D. Jake some years ago. So all of these dignitaries. And I was there with them. And at the end of the gala, you know how these galas are. Everybody's rushing to get their cards and at the valet. And the hotel is connected to the convention center. Now, I had to go to the bank to make some deposits. I didn't feel like waiting in the line to get my car out the valet. So I decided to walk down to the convention center, where, which is where my wife is. So my wife holds down my business quite like your mom did for your dad. So she's working with all the vendors, getting everything set up. And she had a 2007 Chrysler Town and Country. So I went and got in her 2007 Chrysler Town and Country, and I'm driving to the bank. And one of, I won't say his name, but a businessman in the community who knew me drove up next to me in his Escalade, and he looked at me and was kind of like, Jerome, you know, you're, you're in a 2007 Chrysler town and country. And it, it makes me think of an article I wrote for Black Enterprise called Image or Economics. And what I argue is that most of, most of the times we say we want economics, we want power, we want wealth, but we're settling for the image. So growing up, my images that I saw of success were in Ebony, were in Jet. Nowadays, it's social media. And the unfortunate thing is that social media can provide images that really aren't based upon reality. So Eden, tell me a little bit about what you think the role of Ebony and Jet is in terms of shaping the ideals of wealth and what it means to be a success as an African-American in the United States of America. No, absolutely. I mean, we have to be very cognizant of the images that we put out there. You know, we talk about celebrating Black life and, and showing what does it mean to be Black in the idea of wealth and, and who are the movers and shakers and the idea that a lot of people will flash, you know, money or chains or houses or cars, but they don't own any of it. And we have to make sure we showcase what does it mean to be successful? What does it mean to, to, to show that you are not only about the image, but of the substance? So absolutely for Ebony and Jet, we, we don't tread on that lightly. We understand that we have a fundamental responsibility to hold ourselves accountable on the images that we put forth, the stories that we will tell, because again, so many times you you hear about these lifestyles and we have to equip that generation to be about something more than the latest shoes. Not only can you wear the shoes, but do you understand, well, how do you make money around it? How do you become part of the supply chain in a meaningful way instead of just being the end consumer? So absolutely, Ebony plays Ebony and Jet play a significant role in, in that um, storytelling. But I love it. I love it. I, I'm going to tell you another quick story. So my dad was old school country, grew up on the farm. So I, I grew up, I thought that we were broke because I never could have anything. Uh, I begged for years to get a new Nintendo. By the time I got it, the Sega Genesis was out. And anytime I asked for anything, I was the youngest. So I got hand-me-downs from my brothers and sisters. We didn't have cable in the household until I got a job and bought it. And anytime I asked for anything, my parents would say, boy, we ain't got no money. We ain't got any money for that. And so I became that way. I have four children. And I remember when my kids were younger, they're stair step, but they were maybe about five, four, and three. And they would always ask, let's go to McDonald's. Let's go here. We ain't got no money. We're not going. To, we're not going. To. You know, that's what I would tell them. And one day we were driving, and uh, I think we were passing Shipley's Donuts. And my youngest daughter said, Daddy, can we go to Shipley's? And my oldest, who was about five or six at the time, she looked and said, Daddy, you know we ain't got no money for that. You know, and I then from that, I remember growing up because I never, they, my parents didn't get me any of the good stuff. I mean, they paid for my college, they paid me for my car, but at that age, all you wanted was stuff. So I remember growing up thinking that we were broke. I thought we didn't have any money. 
So I started to talk to my children a little bit different. I stopped saying we don't have any money for that to start saying, is that the best use of our money? Is yeah. that a good investment? Tell me a little bit. Obviously, your dad was very wealthy. Did, how how did he relate to money and what did he teach you guys about money growing up? Oh, well, the first thing they like to say is we ha we may have some money, but you guys do not. Our money is not. <laughs> there yeah. were some fundamental things that they made sure that my siblings and I had that we had a roof over our head. We had hot food on the table that we had a place uh, to to take us from here to there. So we had transportation and that they would take care of our education outside of hopefully whatever scholarships that my siblings and I would receive. From there, they were of no obligation in order to, <laughs> to provide the lapse of luxury for my siblings and I, because both my parents, you know, they came from very humble beginnings. They understood the power of a dollar and what that means in order to work for something. So they knew that my siblings and I were going to grow up with means that they could only have dreamed of. So they had to instill work ethic. They had to instill the understanding of what a dollar means and how do you make it and how do you you uh, um, build a sense of understanding of what money really is and how do you, when it's in your hands, what is the responsibilities that come with it? So no, my siblings and I, we talk about it all the time about how we didn't rock the latest anything. My <laughs> oldest brother, he was driving in the 19 the mid 1990s um and his first car was from the 80s so that lets you know that mm -hmm. we we weren't we weren't the the kids on the block that you were running to their house because they always had the latest now yes did they afford us opportunities that you know because of their success we were able to enjoy absolutely but my parents made sure that we really understood the blessings and where our blessings came from. That yes, even with hard work and such, it was God blessing our family and being able to see prayers being answered, not just from them, but generations um, before living out through us. So we had a responsibility to understand what that meant and to carry that same level of humility and understanding of, of our blessings from above. No, I think that's so good. That's so good. I, I mean, your your dad seems a lot like my dad. They they made it very clear that uh, they put a roof over my head, clothes on my back, and they didn't owe me anything else. So, but now, so let's shift back a little bit to Ebony Jet. Now, uh, I grew up looking at magazines, looking at Ebony, looking at Jet. Uh, I think many in in your generation and younger tend to view magazines, newspapers as for old people. So there really has to be a different uh, way of branding and shifting. How is Ebony and Jet going to tackle that to really bring this new generation into what Ebony and Jet is doing? You know, first, obviously, it's, it's making sure that we lead from a tech, technological standpoint. Um, the idea of people are able to consume brands across various different mediums these days. So we had to make sure that that we um, are positioning Ebony and Jet to be leaders in the technology standpoint, that you're able to see the brand also in a way never before. The idea that I'm wearing Ebony, you know, before it was just you would you would get the magazine and that would be it. But the idea of being able to wear it, to consume it from film to other types of content. I mean, Ebony has the opportunity and so does Jet, although we'll launch Jet uh, next year if we first started with Ebony. Um, but Ebony has the opportunity to live in and breathe in spaces and industries like never before. And that's what we're most excited for, that we don't just have to be a magazine. We can be anything because the brand is that strong and people are looking to consume it in ways um, that the Johnson family um, weren't able to transition um, the brand to be or the technology and the opportunities just weren't there at the time.
Thank you so much for tuning in to the Black Money Tree Podcast. Don't forget to like and share this video. And if you want more content like this, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We'll see you next time.